Say Rights, Anonymous here. Wanted to discuss something that we go into a lot um, with our learners in exile and the people who are kind of following our stuff at home and, and asking us for stuff. And uh, one of the things is we're always harping on is go slow. Go slower, slow it down, feel what you're doing. And there's a lot of really good reasons for that. <clears throat> um, it's not, a lot of people have a lot of skepticism for moving slowly. Um, and that's because that the only way a lot of people think of being able to train speed is by moving fast. And yes, that's a crucial component to learning how to move fast is just trying to move as fast as you can. That's not really what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is when you start, when you're beginning a movement set or um, any type of technique that is unfamiliar to you and unfamiliar to your body, you want to take it nice and slow, and so you can pay attention to everything that's going on. And there's also a lot of kind of physiological things that are going on that are going to help you when you start moving faster. And in fact, a lot of times, if you move slowly and smoothly for long enough, as you move on, you will start to be able to move faster more effortlessly and without a whole, whole lot of resistance of your own muscles and that kind of thing. So what are the things that we're talking about when we're moving slowly? If we're talking about something, say, <clears throat> an honor sash strike, going around like this or like this, okay? We all, we're always telling people to slow down with these because it's, especially with the downward strikes, it's very easy just to, ah, to really go at it. Now the reason we do that is because, one, we want to be able to tell what our entire body is doing the whole time. And in order to do that, at first, I got to move nice and slow so that I can pay attention to it. I got to know when my weight is shifting, where my blade is, and bringing it down. Okay? And then when I go around the other way, I feel the same things through there. Okay? Now, another reason why moving slowly is beneficial is because it's harder to move in a good arc and nice and smooth slowly. A lot of times what people will see is when they start to move slow, it won't be like this, but it will be like this. Okay, And that's because your body hasn't built up the patterns, which we'll talk about in a second, in those little kind of connect the dots. And that's really the real reason we say go slow and what the real mechanism for going slow and learning is. And that's something we call Hebean learning or neuromuscular patterning. And this is the biological function that your nerves will actually change positions to favor pathways or commands that go through the most, okay? Habitual movement, all of those things that we tell people to, to watch out for that you don't even know you're doing, right? Oh, my knee's coming in there. I never noticed that before. All of that kind of thing is taken up by neuromuscular patterning. Now, sometimes these patterns get out of whack, and that's we use these training methods to kind of correct those. Moving slowly definitely helps you correct those because you can, as I'm going here, if I have a problem, with my knee falling in on me when I strike, which is a common problem. Boom, like that. I go slow, and I can get my upper body turn and really concentrate on keeping my knee steady. Okay? Same thing with, uh, with doing orbits, okay, or the spins. Right? If I'm having a hard time getting, getting it back like this so that it comes all the way, let's say I'm going here like this, and it comes around like this. Okay. One of the things that's really good to do is do it slowly. As I come through here, I'm just going to turn it down, and you see I bend my elbow to here, and now I've got a good angle with the blade. Now I just turn my whole body and continue that out nice and slowly. So, doing orbit slow, an excellent idea. Doing strike slow, an even better idea. Okay. Learning combinations. Learn them slow first, right? Learn them in, in certain numbers, right? Do them slow and 
smooth first. And then later, you can do them fast, right? So we don't want to get into just doing one, kind of like over and over and over again like that, right? When you get to a point where you can, where you can try to test yourself to see how many of these things you can do in, in a row or within a minute or something like that, the criteria that you always have to use is with, while holding form, right? Because I've got to be able to just move just as fast as I can with holding my form, okay? If I move any faster, it's actually going to be detrimental to me because what's going to happen is it's going to fall over on those patterns that I'm trying to change. And those patterns are already very, very strong. If I add repetition to it, if I add a lot of volume or I add a lot of stress like speed or, or, or a heavy weapon to them, those patterns will get even stronger and then I'm going to be taking steps backward, right? Now this of course is not to say do not practice. That's what we're telling you. We're saying practice, but practice slow. Practice easy, right? Before you get into moving fast and seeing how many you can do or, or, <clears throat> or how powerful you can hit. Because that's not really a concern with us. With our, what we're doing here, we don't need a whole lot of power. And we don't, what we need is a lot of control. And so this is what's going to give you the control, is moving slowly. And it's going to help you not build up those bad habits. Because you, you'll be aware of, of things that are going on. A couple of bad habits that are really common, the raising of the shoulders. And this is another reason we tell people to relax and slow down. Because one of the natural things that happens with us when we start speeding up, our shoulders will rise up because it wants to create some tension here in the arms so that the arms can just move like that. Now notice, for me to do that, I have to contract my abs really hard and really, really push my shoulders down. What will happen with most people is they start doing this. Their shoulders come up like that. And that is what we really want to avoid. Slow. Slow is the name of the game. Neuromuscular patterning is really what all martial arts training is about. Whether you're doing the repetitious drills and lines, whether you're doing the large, complex forms in Dulan, or what have you, this is where you start. Teach your body first how to do the things that you want to make it do, all right? And then when you get to going quick, your body's going to be very, very familiar with it. This is what people call muscle memory. This is the actual thing people call muscle memory, okay? Because what's happening is, the again, the nerves are actually changing positions and creating new physical pathways that will get strengthened over time. Just like ruts in the road or in the dirt, you go over it a certain amount of times and you keep going over it, it will get deeper and deeper and deeper. The deeper the groove, the harder it is to change. We want our good, positive grooves to be really deep. And we want our negative, habitual grooves to be very shallow so that we can constantly change them and correct them. Okay? One of the ways that we do that, especially in the beginning, and even at, at higher levels, is we move slowly. Now, if you move really slowly, that can be a challenge in and of itself. But that might be a talk for another time. Anyway, hopefully that will shed some light on some of the uh, things that we tell people when, when learning this all the time. Move slow. Uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Now, that is... Uh, really the adage that, that we come to uh, here at TPLA. So, thanks for tuning in. Try those out. Until next time, happy savers.